Tell me when to start. Hi, welcome to the Golden Prescription. This is your source for professional skincare knowledge on YouTube. My name is Nye, the beautyologist, and I am your friendly neighborhood esthetician. So today, the skin that we're going to be talking about is in the skin on your face. It's the skin on your butt, or your thighs, or your arms, or your legs. It's those little tiny raised bumps that aren't quite pimples, but are equally annoying and equally embarrassing. So what is keratosis pilaris? Well, maybe you'll call them strawberry legs, or I've even heard some people say goose flesh. The worst one that I've heard is chicken skin, which is disgusting, because don't tell me that I have chicken skin on my body. Goose flesh is pretty bad too, but strawberry legs is such a cute, like, little name for it. Anyway, the medical term of the condition is keratosis pilaris, and sometimes you'll see it referred to as follicular keratosis. Basically, all KP is is just a buildup of dead skin cells around the hair follicle. They clump together, they form a bump. The most common areas for KP are the back of the arms, back of the legs, booty cheeks, and on children you may also see them on their face cheeks. Me personally, I have KP literally from my ankle to my thigh, my back of my arms, and a little bit on my forearm, which is terrible. The earliest I can remember beginning to notice KP was around 12, 13, kind of like that coming of age and you start noticing all these little things about yourself to be embarrassed about. And I swore that I was going to have to wear pants for the rest of my life because I was so embarrassed that my legs were all dotted and rough. I don't know who I thought I was fooling because I'm really way too much of a hoochie to be wearing all them clothes, but but I do still hate them. I'm not over it completely because I definitely photoshopped them out of all of my pictures. So how common is KP? Keratosis pilaris is super common. I think WebMD said there is about 3 million new cases a year. Because KP is a chronic condition, those 3 million people don't disappear from year to year. So there's 3 million more people who have KP. And it's even more common in black women, black people, because our keratinocytes are more densely packed in the skin and loses moisture a lot more quickly. Dry skin exacerbates KP, and having extra keratinocytes means that there's higher likelihood that they will get clogged around your follicles. And if you live in cold climates, KP is even more common. Many people actually experience that their KP goes away in the summertime and is only around for the wintertime. That's not my experience. I have KP all year round, but it's definitely a lot more manageable in the summer. KP is in no way harmful, it's just annoying. And even more annoying that there is no permanent cure for it. But with constant treatment, you can find relief from KP and have super smooth legs that you've always wanted. So how do we treat it? At the Golden Prescription Skin Studio here on West 3rd Street that I just opened in LA, I offer this really bomb skin smoothing treatment for the legs and booty cheeks, specifically designed to treat KP. For more information on that treatment, you can go to labeautyologist.com. But if you are at home and can't get to me here in LA, I have a three step process of what you can do to help get rid of KP. The first step is to exfoliate a lot, like all of the time. Typically they say not to exfoliate too much and to only exfoliate one to two times a week. But if you have KP, it's an ongoing chronic condition so you have to stay on top of it almost obsessively. I recommend using multiple forms of exfoliation three to seven days a week. So that's every other day to every day to ensure max smoothness. First, use exfoliating gloves in the shower to help manually slough away dead skin. Two, which is my favorite tip, is to use an alpha hydroxy body wash, which contain active ingredients like glycolic acid or lactic acid. So this is going to help exfoliate on the cellular level. The best AHA body wash that I found is called Glytone, and that I sell on my website, labeautyologist.com. I love AHA cleansers because you're already cleansing your skin, so it's not an extra step that you have to add like with a scrub. But AHAs can be a little bit expensive, so my next tip is using a scrub. But I'm going to leave this one optional because if you are using exfoliating gloves and an AHA body wash, you don't really need to scrub. Scrubs can be a little aggressive and they're not my favorite form of exfoliation, but a scrub that I do love is KP Doctor, which you can find Sephora, which also contains a lactic acid. So because of the combination of the two, I like that one. And now the second step is hair removal. How you remove your hair will definitely affect the smoothness of your legs. If you are shaving, definitely make sure that you're only shaving on damp skin, conditioned with a body lotion or conditioner. Shave with a new sharp razor in the direction of hair growth only. If you wax, 
Sometimes this can exacerbate the issue. You're probably more susceptible to ingrown hairs because those extra keratinocytes are going to be blocking the hair follicles as they try and grow through. So make sure that you're exfoliating properly using an AHA wash and using exfoliating gloves. If you don't care about hair removal, you cannot remove your hair at all. I've done this too, but I actually bleached my hair, which is a really cool third option. And this gives your whole body like a kind of golden freckly look to it. I absolutely love it. I do it in the summertime and I use Sol de Regenero Body Veil, which you can find at Sephora. And the third and last step is to hydrate and moisturize. While your skin is still damp, lotion your body all the way down with an AHA body lotion. So that's another type of exfoliation while you're hydrating and moisturizing which is super important because dry skin exacerbates KP and because it's a chronic issue, you're going to have to be exfoliating a lot. More than you can actually do, so just use an AHA to do the work for you. Lotioning on damp skin is going to ensure that you're sealing the moisture into the skin. There are a bunch of really great AHA lotions that I recommend and I will list those all at the bottom at various prices and various formulas, but they all contain lactic acid or glycolic acid, which is really gonna help. This one here is currently my new favorite from Derma Therapy because not only does it contain 10% lactic acid, which is pretty high for a non-professional skincare product, but it also contains 10% urea. Urea is a humectant that's going to lock water and moisture into the skin. It's also found in pee, but that's neither here nor there. And this company so kindly sent me a bunch of samples, so I am going to be giving away two to anyone who shares this video on Instagram or Twitter. I'm going to give more details to the giveaway at the end of the video, so watch to the very end to get free stuff. So the last product I'm going to mention is for moisturizing. And I haven't tried it yet, but I've read the ingredients and it sounds absolutely amazing. It's from the parent company of Ordinary, Deseem. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And if I'm saying that wrong, I'm going to just want to jump off a bridge because I hate pronouncing things wrong. But I never heard anyone say it out loud, so sorry. This is all I got. It's a retinol body oil called Retin Oil. If you're unfamiliar with retinol, it's a vitamin A derivative that speeds up cell turnover and treats a whole array of skin issues from acne to hyperpigmentation to aging. In this case, it helps KP because it's going to help prevent those skin cells from building up in the first place. I highly recommend checking out that oil. I will be buying it soon. Or if anybody from the scene wants to send it to me for free to review, I would love you forever. That is how you get rid of KP. Like I said, temporarily, it's a chronic issue, so you're going to have to keep doing this stuff all of the time. Hopefully if you're lucky your KP goes away a little bit in the summer times and you get a break from this whole rigmarole. Alright, so the giveaway rules. Like I said, I'm going to be giving these two bottles away to help treat your KP and all you have to do is like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this video on either Twitter or Instagram talking about how you deal with KP. You can also share in the comments below how keratosis pilaris affects you because I love to hear about it because I also suffer from it too. It's obnoxious and I don't think we know enough about it yet. So follow me on Instagram and Twitter to join the conversation. My Instagram and Twitter are labeautyologist.com. No. My Instagram and Twitter are labeautyologist. And make sure you subscribe if you haven't. Thank you for watching. This is my first video back in a while because I've been so busy. I did a New York City spa pop-up, which went absolutely amazing. So thank you for everyone who went, came out to that. It was the holidays that I opened my spa studio here in LA. So please, if you are in LA, I'd love for you to come check it out. You can get more information about how to book and the services that I offer on labeautyologist.com. And yeah, I'm going to be back to posting a lot more regularly. So let me know what skincare questions do you have. My next spa pop-up is set to to be in New York City, DC, and then I'm going to do Atlanta. So if you are in those cities, give me a shout out, let me know, and look out for those next. I love you so much. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I appreciate your support times a thousand. I'm Nye, your friendly neighborhood esthetician, aka the beautyologist, and remember, if it doesn't feed you, don't water it.